Hello and welcome to Nobody's Watching episode 11 and my second attempt at making the loadout video because I spent ages working on the first one and the sound was crap so I had to scrap it. I think I've fixed it but if you notice anything funny with the sound please let me know in the comments. For this video I need to split it into three because the three main game modes there's three on three, there's solo and there's pinball and there are different optimal loadouts and styles for each of those types so we're going to start off by focusing on three on three which is the default style of play. I also need to put a bit of a disclaimer up front. I can't show you the best loadout because there isn't a specific best loadout. Well I suppose technically there would be if you had every single blaster unlocked and leveled out to max there would be probably an optimal loadout but we're not in that position, you're not in that position, not sure anybody's in that position, so there's no point in us speculating on that. Let's focus on what will actually help you get better at this game. Your best loadout is going to change over time. It's going to depend on what blasters you've got unlocked, which ones you've got upgraded, and also which playstyle you prefer. So we're instead going to focus on the principles behind choosing an optimal loadout, and we're going to start off with three on three. So we have three slots at the top and I'm going to divide these into three categories. The first one is what I'm going to call your default or your sidearm. This is going to be a good all-round blaster that you can use on any map that is going to have a short respawn time below 20 seconds. It's never going to be the best blaster to use on any map but it is going to work and it's what you're going to switch to after you get killed holding your main blaster which now needs to cool down. I'd suggest using a blaster that's got decent survivability, although this isn't essential. The primary thing that you're looking for in this blaster is one that you're comfortable using. You will inevitably use this blaster a lot, so it needs to be one that you're comfortable switching to. The second slot is what I would call your primary blaster or your main blaster. This is a blaster that, again, you will take onto any map and it's the one that's going to get you the most kills, do the most damage, or fit your playstyle the best. For me, I like heavy blasters, so in my main slot is going a heavy blaster. And finally is what I would call your specialist slot. So this is a slot where you want to put a blaster that's going to excel on certain maps, but not going to be so great for others. This is probably going to be one of two types of blaster. Either something that excels at long range, like a sniper rifle, or something that excels at uh, close range, heavy damage combat, something like a shotgun. Or a small arm that can fire out a lot of uh, darts very, very quickly. There's a very good chance that both your primary blaster and your specialist blaster are going to have very long respawn times, which is why it's essential that your default blaster or your sidearm has got a short respawn time because you don't want to end up in a position where you've been killed a few times in quick succession and all three of your blasters are on cooldown and you can't enter the battle so you just sat there while your team are getting peppered. Just as an aside, if you don't have a specialist blaster or you don't like the idea of doing it, you can just put in a second primary blaster. So another blaster that you like using, fits your style, but it's just not quite as good as your primary blaster. So you can almost have a backup to your primary if you want. That's a perfectly acceptable way to play. Okay, so now you understand the role of the three slots, we're going to start looking at some different loadouts. We're going to look at some of the loadouts that I found to be optimal early on. The loadout I use at the moment, which is my favourite, and the loadout that I am intending to use once I manage to upgrade this goddamn Rivonix 360 blaster. Okay, let's look at the default or sidearm. I originally used the commander for this role and um, the reason I did this is because it's got a 9 spe second respawn delay and you know it's fine it does what you need it to do it's nothing special and um, I quickly replaced this with the echo which used to be my main blaster it's now my default blaster or my side blaster and um, the reason I chose this is because it's got high survivability because of its healing. It's got that uh, short respawn delay and it's got a decent range as well. There's nowhere, no battle I can get into where the echo is bad. But at the same time, there's no battle I can get into where it excels. 
which is why it was quickly overtaken um, as not my primary blaster. Other blasters came along that just did more damage, like the Mega Mastodon, my current main. It's been my main blaster since I upgraded it to level 10 before Christmas, and, and I've got a lot of kills with this. There's no battle I go into where I don't want this in my loadout. Um, it does extra damage, it takes reduced incoming, Unfortunately, that 36 six second delay stops it from being a default or a secondary blaster. Um, but I might use it as a as an alternate primary. As you can see, I've got loads of kills with this, 1,100 in a couple of months. It's become very apparent in the last couple of weeks, though, that the Revonix 360 just is going to outclass it in every way. This will be my new primary blaster once I level it up. Prior to running the Mega Mastodon, I used the Shockwave. Um, so this, if you like, is almost like the poor man's version. It's still a heavy blaster. Uh, at the time when I got this, um, it had the biggest clip of any of my blasters. Still a relatively short uh, respawn delay. You could technically use it as a sidearm. But I probably won't because it just it's not doing enough of what I want it to. Still, if you're early on, I would recommend the Shockwave as your primary blaster. Okay, now for the specialist blaster. Um, so, if you watch my videos, you'll know I use the speed. I've been using this ever since I discovered its secret power as a sniper rifle disguised as an attack blaster. That 49 meter range makes it perfect for 3 out of the 5 3v3 maps. And although not ideal due to the low HP, it can work as an attack blaster in a pinch as long as you're using that shield to give you enough time to actually kill a couple of people before you die. I've always tried to use this slot as a sort of sniper slot. Um, so before I discovered the speed, I was using the Pharaoh in this slot. This is a traditional sniper rifle, camp blaster if you like. Check out my video on this blaster for a breakdown. Because it's epic rarity, I didn't have it leveled up for a long time. So before that, I was using the Retaliator. Um, you may have heard me refer to this as a sort of pseudo sniper rifle before because of that 43 meter range. It's high damage and it's painfully slow priming speed for what is supposedly a sensor, sensor blaster. Its first nerf power does allow it to act as a sensor blaster, only if you're losing. As soon as you start winning, it goes back to being a sniper. I don't intend to do a video on the Retaliator, but if you want one, let me know. Another viable blaster for both your default or your specialist is the Ultra. Its range lets it sort of act like a sniper rifle, um, and the fact that it's got decent all-round stats and good healing ability makes it a perfect default blaster in my opinion. The 2, which I've made a video on recently, also makes a good default blaster because of that short reload speed and the high rate of fire. And finally, an early favourite is the Cyclone Shock, strictly better than the Commander, only has that 9 second respawn delay which is brilliant and it gets more powerful as you run out of darts. If you're just starting out, this is an excellent sidearm because you will unlock it straight away. It's very quick and easy to level up and it's never bad. Okay, I'm just going to put my current setup back to normal. We'll have a little bit look at gameplay and then in the next video I will have a look at good loadouts for solo and I'll also do another video for pinball. I already have two videos on pinball and even though they don't focus on loadout, there is loadout in there. Okay, so here's a map where my specialist blaster isn't ideal, we don't want to use it. So on a map like this, I'm going to start off with my primary blaster, uh, which in this case is the Mastodon. And ideally, I don't want to be using my specialist blaster at all on this level. My strategy is to try and use my primary blaster for as long as possible. If I die, which I will in this game, uh, I'm going to switch to my default blaster, not to my specialist blaster. And I'm going to use that and hopefully if I get killed again it will have given my primary blaster enough time to cool down. So as you can see I take the hit there. Um, we lose this game very quickly just as a heads up and um, the purpose of this footage is to demonstrate strategy not to show me kicking ass I don't kick ass in this. Sorry about the little pop-up at the top I didn't notice I was too busy concentrating. So as I said earlier, the, state, uh, the stated purpose of this blaster is it should be good to use on any map. It's perfectly good to use on this map. Its survivability is the reason we like it, but we quickly get overwhelmed when we're outmatched. 
So you can see my primary blast has almost cooled down. I was about to go back in with it, but the game was over. This time we load into a map where our specialist blaster excels, so we're going to start with the specialist blaster. Ideally, you'll use this blaster all the way to the end, but I've chosen this footage because, as you'll see, I get uh, hurt very, very quickly. Someone teleports behind me, takes most of my health. I'm not actually sure how they did that, by the way. I've still not figured out all the mechanics of this game. I think it might be a power card, I'm not sure. So you, you see, we die quickly, and that level 10 Revonix is the reason we lose this match. So if you die early on with your Specialist Blaster, you want to load in with your default or your sidearm. Reason being, if you die, you're going to have to come back in with your Primary Blaster. Now, if we'd have done this the other way around, if we'd have gone back in with our Primary Blaster and died, and then we had only our default left and we died again like we did here, all three Blasters would have been on cooldown. But as you can see, because of the order we went in, my default Blaster had just cooled down, meaning that we're not sat around waiting for Blasters. And that is exactly why you need that one blaster with a very short cooldown time in your loadout. Um, so as you can see, level 10 Revonix ripped us to shreds. This is exactly why it's going to be my new primary once I upgrade it. Okay, so I've got two more matches to show you that just demonstrate the points I've been trying to make as we've gone along here. So once again, we've started with our specialist blaster and as always, when you go in with your specialist blaster, you're hoping to complete the match with it. I've got so many videos of me doing that, but that's not what I'm trying to show you here. So let's have a look. The shield on the speed coming in clutch, saving me as always. Now, oddly, I don't know how he got up there, but uh, we quickly take him out and we're just carrying on. We're using it as that pseudo sniper and we get taken out by somebody else using a long range weapon as well. So because the match isn't nearly over, I go in with my default. It's a tried and tested strategy, um, that timing is, is really important and it can be the difference between a win and a loss. What I don't want you doing is going in with your default sidearm blaster and just hoping to die quickly so that you can come back in with um, your primary blaster or your specialist blaster. The point of this is to demonstrate that when you come in with that default blaster, you should be able to play the rest of the game with it quite comfortably. So you can see I'm, um, I'm doing well with it, I'm getting tags. With it being the Echo, which I haven't done a video on yet, but I will, uh, it works quite well at a distance, um, but it's not bad up front as well. We're winning comfortably when I get taken out here. We only need one more kill, that like Ravonix is up, so I go in with a primary blaster, spot them, and I just blast them straight into the lake for the win. That's one of the cool things you can do with knockback, and when I do eventually make a Mastodon video, I will showcase that. Okay, so hopefully I've demonstrated the loadout strategy well so far. I've just got one fa final thing to demonstrate to you. So we're going back into another match where we're starting with our specialist blaster. And just as a reminder, you don't need to copy my style of play if it doesn't suit you. Pick the blasters that you enjoy the most, the ones that you've got leveled up the most, and the ones that suit your playstyle. As long as you apply these general principles when you're choosing your loadout, you're going to have a nice balanced set of blasters that should do you well no matter what level you come on. Even onto the dreaded dungeon, which I'm sure is some people's favourite level, uh, really well suited to close, close combat and heavy knockback. So as you can see here now, my speed is starting to speed up, it's starting to do its thing. So I'm getting to a point where I'm pumping out a lot of damage, I'm getting my kills. This is this blaster really working at its optimum. Again, your specialist blaster might be something like a shotgun or something more akin to a newsie where you get to fight up front. As long as it suits you and it works on the levels that you want it to work on, it's a good blaster for your specialist slot. And if you don't think you've got a specialist, just choose a secondary primary. That's a bit of a contradiction. Okay, so you can see we've nearly won here and then I get taken out. So. We're not needing to worry about cooldown times, we just want to win, so we go straight in with our primary blaster, ignore your sidearm default, all you want to do is go in and finish the job, which we do very quickly with our high damage and our grenade. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you and will guide you in creating a good loadout for 3v3. Keep an eye out for my upcoming videos for solo and for pinball. Thank you for watching.